Um, you, had, you had to talk to the executives on that one, man, because all I know is we were number one, uh, number one black show when we went off the air. They took us off. We didn't even finish the last season. We, they took us off like around uh, Christmas or something. I talked all kind of stuff. I, you know, I was just mad. Really? Because, you know, you, I, I knew that, um, I, I knew that it, it was just, um, it was us. It, it was. It was like our idea, you know. So, so you're mad, you know, because you're not getting any credit. We had switched from. Uh, we were on ABC. The Hughley's mm -hmm. was originally on ABC, yep. and we uh, switched from ABC to uh, UPN, the uh, Underpaid right. Negro Network. Ooh, don't and do that. We don't went. Do that. Uh, we went there. Pick uh, we we were underpaid. Negro. I said. It has been almost 30 years since Living Single went off the air, and plenty has happened in the cast's lives. John Hinton, who played Overton Wakefield Jones on the show, even survived a near-fatal car crash and now claims that Hollywood dropped him like a hot potato in the aftermath of his misfortune. It took him four hours to cut me out the car. No, sir. Yeah, four no, hours. Sir. And um, the reason why I know that is because uh, I had to do a community service afterwards because I was drunk, of course, and I had to do community service. The actor and comedian was 40 years old when he had a significant brush with death. The Living Single star recounted being on a break for the first time in a while before getting into the car accident. Hinton recalls attending a UPN party during this period, but his memory ends upon arrival. Unfortunately, the celebrations were cut short when he got into a tragic car accident that resulted in severe injuries and a mini coma. He broke nine teeth, destroyed his left eye socket, shattered both legs, ripped his stomach, and deformed his face in the crash. The damage to his appearance was so terrible that surgeons couldn't recognize him, and so did Hollywood. In a past interview, Hinton recalls his publicist providing plastic surgeons with pictures of himself before they could operate. Thankfully, the extensive plastic surgery has restored most of his facial features and structure. The actor also revealed that he was so drunk at the time of the accident that other people had to inform him of his actions. Thankfully, he realized the extent of what he had done, calling the mishap so stupid. Fortunately, Hinton had a speedy recovery and was able to get back on the road for stand-up within eight months. The actor was even on set filming for The Hewleys six weeks after the tragic car accident, but he says Hollywood has never treated him the same ever since. The Hewleys was Hinton's biggest claim to fame after Living Single went off the air. The sitcom was originally piloted on ABC, but moved to UPN, where it gathered over 5.8 million viewers for its debut. Hinton's sitcom brought UPN its best viewership numbers in over two years when the first episode aired. As a result, the network could not go ahead without the famous comedian in their next season, despite the accident. Although the Hewleys perfectly showcased Hinton's star power, one cannot forget where he began. The comedian starred alongside stars such as Queen Latifah in Living Single, where he made a name for himself. Man, I gotta agree with my little Maya Angelou here. <laughs> Come on, girl, you can't quit. Please, can and should. You need to put this petty sandbox feud behind you. Living Single is a beloved series that set a precedent for modern pop culture favorites, such as Insecure. The ensemble was fantastic and the black audiences loved it, so it was devastating for many when the show was canceled. Unfortunately, not even the show's stars knew the issue with Living Single before they stopped filming. Even Hinton explained that he had no idea why the network mysteriously removed the show. In another past interview, Hinton reveals that Living Single was a number one show when they stopped filming. He shared that Fox dropped the show in the middle of its fifth season and just started airing its reruns. The actor speaks of Living Single highly and alludes that its popularity would have skyrocketed on another network. He even applauded how well the show was doing 20 years later and commented on its syndication saying, there's probably a marathon running of Living Single somewhere right now. Not bad for my first show. As mentioned earlier, Living Single was a groundbreaking sitcom that captured the essence of urban living, friendship, and love in a way that was both authentic and hilarious. Premiering on August 22, 1993 on the Fox Network, 
Living Single and its cast quickly became a cultural touchstone, paving the way for a future sitcom centered around Black characters and their experiences. Set in the heart of Brooklyn, New York, the show revolved around the lives of six dynamic friends navigating the ups and downs of adulthood. From career aspirations to romantic entanglements, the show delved into the complexities of friendship and the pursuit of happiness and success. Created by Yvette Lee Bowser, a trailblazing television writer and producer, the show struck a chord with viewers for its authentic portrayal of Black friendship and sisterhood. At a time when diversity in television was sorely lacking, Living Single provided much needed representation for African-American audiences. Its sharp writing, relatable characters, and witty humor made it a standout in the sitcom landscape. So Hennon and the rest were pretty much shocked when the network pulled the plug on them and canceled the show. You may be wondering who some of Hinton's co-stars are on the show and where they are now. The first name ringing in the show's fans would definitely be Queen Latifah. Before playing the role of Khadijah James, the ambitious and level-headed editor and publisher of the fictional magazine Flavor, Queen Latifah was known for her skills as a rapper and musician. Her successful album, All Hail the Queen, which featured her hit single, Ladies First, was released in the early 90s to critical and commercial praise. Then she won a Grammy for her single, Unity, which came out in 1993, the same year she landed the living single role. In addition to television, she also landed starring roles in films, including the 1996 hit, Set If Off, which also starred Jada Pinkett Smith and Vivica Fox. Next up, Queen Latifah got an Oscar nomination for her 2002 performance in Chicago, and she earned an Emmy for her role as Bessie Smith, the blues singer, in the HBO film Bessie. She also had her own talk show, The Queen Latifah Show, and she was a regular in the TV series Star, as well as in the crime series reboot The Equalizer. On the film front, she starred in several recent movies, including Girls Trip, The Tiger Rising, and Hustle. Then there is Kim Coles. Before landing the role of Sinclair James Jones, Kim Coles was known for her performance in the show, In Living Color. It was her success on that show that led to her landing the role in Living Single. From there, she went on to become a regular on several TV shows, including The Gina Davis Show, One on One, 10 Items or Less, and The Soul Man. Most recently, she was in 2023's Days of Our Lives. Coles was also the host of BT's game show, Pay It Off, and she appeared in several movies, including the 2024 film, Hungry. Lastly, she has also published several books, including I'm Free, But It'll Cost You Single Life, according to Kim Coles. Another popular name, a person rumored to have dated Hinton, is next. Yes, she is none other than Kim Fields. Of course, all television fans knew and loved Kim Fields in her role as Tootie on The Facts of Life. Long before she played the role of Regine Hunter, the fashion-obsessed, man-crazy friend of Khadija, Sinclair, and Maxine in Living Single. In the 90s, Fields made guest appearances in several shows, including The Golden Palace, Martin, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and Kenan and Kel. She continued to act in the 2000s and landed roles in The Drew Carey Show, One on One, Meet the Browns, and Lens on Talent. Her film credits include Monster Mutt, What to Expect When You're Expecting, and A Question of Faith. Fields was a cast member on Bravo's Real Housewives of Atlanta in 2015 during its eighth season. Then in 2016, she competed in Dancing with the Stars. Most recently, she starred in several Christmas movies, including You Light Up My Christmas and Adventures in Christmasing. She also played Regina Upshaw in the show, The Upshaws, and appeared in the 2024 film, The Gutter. Next up is Erica Alexander. Erica played the role of Maxine Shaw, Khadija's sharp-tongued, independent, and fiercely intelligent best friend who works as a lawyer. Prior to living single, Alexander played the role of cousin Pam Tucker on The Cosby Show. She also appeared in the 1990 movie, The Long Walk Home, alongside Whoopi Goldberg. But it was her role as Maxine in Living Single that really put Alexander on the map. After that, she went on to get regular spots on Judging Amy, 
Street Time, and Last Man Standing. She received praise for her role as Tess Shoemaker in the sci-fi drama Beyond, as well as for her part in the acclaimed film Get Out of 2017. She also starred in season two of Amazon Prime's Bosch, as well as Hulu's Wu-Tang, an American saga. Not resting on her laurels, she also landed roles in Swimming with Sharks and Apple TV's Shining Girls. Most recently, she was in the movie American Fiction. Last but not least, we have Terrence Carson. Carson played the role of the charming and successful character Kyle Barker. Before living single, Carson was on the TV series Key West and appeared in the film Live in Large. After he landed the role of Kyle Barker, he continued to act, but pivoted into voice work. He was the voice of Mace Windu on Star Wars, The Clone Wars, and Tales of the Jedi, Kratos in the PlayStation game God of War, and the Green Lantern on Justice League, Cosmic Chaos. He also has appeared in films including 2023's A Wesley Christmas Wedding and 2024's The Despaired. And finally, there is Cress Williams. In Living Single, Cress Williams played Terrence Scooter Williams, the love interest of Khadijah. He also played a strong part in another popular show, that of Deshaun Hadell in Beverly Hills 90210. Williams continued to play several strong roles on the small screen, including the role of Antoine Babcock in Nash Bridges, Wyatt Matthewson, the hitman from the popular series Prison Break, and Tucker Jones, Miranda Bailey's first husband on Grey's Anatomy. He also played the role of LeVon Hayes on the CW's Heart of Dixie before landing the lead in Black Lightning, the CW action series that ran from 2018 to 2021. Most recently, he's had guest appearances in the TV series The Flash and Unbroken and appeared in the movie What Remains. So, clearly of all the former cast members, it's only John Hinton who hasn't seen much action despite recovering well enough to get back on track. The actor also got attention after claiming that the popular show stole ideas from Living Single. I talked all kind of stuff. I, you know, I was just mad. Really? Because you know, you, I, I knew that, um, I, I knew that it, it was just, um, it was us. It, it was, it was like our idea, you know. So, so you're mad, you know, because you're not getting any credit. Some who worked on Living Single are skeptical of the originality of Friends, with Queen Latifah doubting it publicly during a 2017 appearance on Andy Cohen's show, Watch What Happens Live. It was one of those things where it was a guy called Warren Littlefield that used to run NBC, and they asked him when all the new shows came out, they said, if there's any show you could have, which one would it be? And he said, Living Single. And then he created Friends, she said, Soon after, Friends and Living Single were pitted against each other in a battle for audiences, and it wasn't a fair fight. As Friends became popular, it received more promotion from NBC, while Living Single was left to flounder and slowly fade from the limelight by Fox. From the 90s up through today, anyone can walk into a gift shop in New York City and find Friends cups, t-shirts, pins, hats, calendars, and every other form of merchandise. In contrast, merch for a living single was nowhere to be found. Again, Hollywood gatekeepers did their thing, according to Hinton. Even worse, all pretenses were dropped when Fox moved living single from its prime Sunday night spot to Thursday to compete directly with Friends' Thursday night spot on NBC. A stark polarization developed in which viewers had to choose between the sitcoms and the rest is history. Friends went on to become a cultural juggernaut still popular today, and Living Single was canceled after five seasons. I was mad because we didn't get any credit for it. We got no acknowledgement. That's what bothered me the most. It was too similar. It was six black folks living in New York City versus six white folks living in New York City. They say Friends is the most creative show in the world, but Yvette didn't get that credit, said Hinton in an interview with Comedy Hype. Regardless of its lack of longevity in comparison to Friends, the impact of Living Single can't be understated or ignored. The sitcom pioneered one of the most successful TV show formulas in existence and deserves the credit for having done so, especially since too often, black creators aren't credited for their work and even have their work stolen by their white counterparts. In an interview with Comedy Hype, 
Kyle T.C. Carson said, in a lot of ways, we were fighting for the respect. We were getting less than the other shows. And then they created friends and gave them everything. And both shows were Warner Brothers shows on Warner Brothers lots. To be on our lot and to watch that was really kind of a slap in the face. No, I got fired. I got fired. It wasn't that I got fired, it was the way it was done. Although the lack of respect given to living single is disappointing, one can't completely blame friends. The powers that be at NBC made sure to choose a dynamic cast of actors with genuine chemistry and comedic skills to match. However, does this mean that living single should be left in the dust as a sad reminder of how Black creators have been mistreated by Hollywood and the public itself? No. Media is forever inaccessible to almost anyone. People around the world watch their favorite series over and over again, with friends being a common choice. Our work stands the test of time. We're doing great in syndication. The show, This Is Us, referenced living single. I thought it was awesome, the fact that 26 years later, people are still talking about us, said Hinton to Comedy Hype. The actor says that rather than re-watching Friends for the umpteenth time, take a look at Living Single and experience what it has to offer. Friends fans shouldn't spend hours endlessly scrolling and binging recommended shows that are similar, but don't quite leave the same impact. If anything, out of all the sitcoms floating around, Living Single is the most equipped to fill the hole left behind after finishing Friends and perhaps offer something more. Friends, starring Aniston, David Schwimmer, Courtney Cox, Matthew Perry, Lisa Kudrow, and Matt LeBlanc, premiered in 1994 and ended in 2004 after 10 seasons. It also followed the lives of six young men and women who lived in the same apartment complex, although they all lived in Manhattan. One fan noticed the distinct similarities between the two sitcoms. It's crazy that people don't know Friends was a direct copy of Living Single, like the exact same show concept, the person tweeted. Six adult friends living together, navigating life, just swapped the black cast for an all white cast. Friends got more promotion and popularity, Living Single got canceled. Schwimmer also addressed the similarities between the two shows in 2020 after Living Single star Erica Alexander called out the actor for telling The Guardian that there should be an all black friends or an all Asian friends. She asked the actor on Twitter if he'd heard of Hash Living Single, to which he responded with a lengthy apology and an acknowledgement of how her show influenced his. It's entirely possible that Warner Brothers and NBC, encouraged by the success of Living Single, gave the Friends pilot a green light, he said in part. I honestly don't know, but it seems likely. If that's the case, we are all indebted to Living Single for paving the way. If anything, the rival shows impacted so many lives and those of cast members on either side. You can even put it like this, Having an issue with friends may end up with you living single. Actor T.C. Carson, who played Kyle Barker from the Living Single series, says he was fired from the TV show after accusing Warner Brothers of neglecting the show in favor of friends, according to Essence. In a past interview with Comedy Hype, Carson shared that he was fired from the show because he vocalized that Warner Brothers started to neglect Living Single for another Warner Brothers series friends. His firing came because he constantly spoke up about their show not getting the attention that was being given to friends. I got fired, he said. We would come to them as a cast, but I would be the spokesperson for it, he continued. So that last season before I left, they called me in and they basically said, well, all these problems we've been having, they listen to you. You're the person they listen to. So if you said something else, then they would do that. I looked at them and said, well, first of all, we're dealing with five grown people and they have their own mindset and own ideas about what we're doing. Everything we come to you with is a group decision, not my decision. But if you think I have that much power, then I need to have a different job. I don't think they like that. Carson also reiterated the expectation that Blacks should be happy that they have a job 
and stay in their place when dealing with being employed by a white company. Part of it is even now, if you're African-American, you shut your mouth and do your job. He added, don't ask questions, be happy that you have a job. He concluded, my whole time on living single, I was happy I had a job, but I understood the importance of the job I had. I understood the importance of what these characters meant to my community. And so when I come to you with a problem, it's because of that, not because of ego. They looked at it as ego. But some cast members, Hinton included, believe the show's fans deserve the chance to relive the moment and are open to working on a sequel. I'm very identified with that show, Erica Alexander recently revealed. The actress may be open to revisiting Living Single more than three decades after it first premiered. We'll see, the 54-year-old told People magazine. Though Alexander no longer sees her co-stars every day at work, they keep in touch via a big group text, she says. It's changed. We didn't have one for years, and then suddenly someone made it. One topic of conversation among the former co-stars, somehow reviving the show. There was a little bit of talk, for sure, said Alexander, who was previously hesitant to get on board, saying she was trying to be pragmatic. I'm very identified with that show. The minute I put on those braids especially, she explains, I haven't yet aged out of that face. I didn't know if I wanted to do it because I thought I'm not going to be able to transcend it. I'm a person who would love to do it. I'm not trying to push it away. I had to look at my career and say, had it been more successful in different spaces, then I might have embraced it more. And yet, I've even grown past that thinking a bit, so we'll see, she continued. I always thought it'd be great animated. Everybody has such unique voices. In 2017, Queen Latifah told Andy Cohen on Watch What Happens Live that a living single relaunch was in the works. It's not there yet, but hopefully we can get it happening, she said at the time. Back in 2022, Kim Fields also weighed in on rebooting the series. I think you have to be really careful with reboots because if you don't get it right, you are messing with people's beloved characters, she said during an appearance on Today. In the years since Living Single went off the air, Alexander has appeared in several other series and movies, including the prime video noir drama Bosch, the sitcom Last Man Standing, and the Oscar-winning horror film Get Out. She's currently starring in director Cora Jefferson's new satire, American Fiction, as Coraline, an attorney embarking on a romance with writer Thelonious Monk Ellison, played by Jeffrey Wright. Unbeknownst to his new girlfriend, Ellison, under a pseudonym, has written a novel that becomes a smash success. The book becomes a flashpoint in their relationship. Alexander is also producing a documentary on the late actress, Diahan Carroll, between Starshine and Clay, The Hidden Diary of Diahan Carroll. It's all hands on deck because believe it or not, it's very hard to get anything like this made. It's hard to get it funded. It's just hard and it will continue to be hard. So we are up against those types of obstacles, says Alexander, who is producing the film with Venus and Serena Williams and Carol's daughter, Suzanne Kay, among others. I'm excited about it though. So despite being put down by Hollywood gatekeepers, all is not all. And Hinton, well into his 60s, may make a screen comeback and have the last dance as one of the best comics ever in Black Hollywood. For now, that is still merely a wish but dreams can become a reality. Only time will tell. And that's it from us today until next time. Thank you for watching.